as I was walking to the home built section of this year's EAA Air Venture in Oshkosh, I stumbled across this very aggressive looking, I'll say conceptual design. I say that because I don't believe it has flown yet, or at least not for very long. But I absolutely love the concept. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Uh, today we're jumping not completely across uh, the world, but at least across the United States over to California. I uh, recently went to Oshkosh, as many of you have, and saw a really, really interesting project uh, there from Tetra Aviation Corp. And today That's we're going to talk about that uh, aircraft. So guys, go ahead and introduce yourself, where you're at, your name, and where you came from. Right. Uh, well, I'm First, uh, my name is Tasuku. I'm the CEO of the Tetra Aviation. We are based on Tokyo, the Japanese uh, aircraft uh, developing team and company. And uh, we presented our new aircraft, uh, Mark V, at the Australia Air Venture. Then uh, we're like, we, we are really happy to have this interview with you. And uh, please enjoy this uh, concept with us together. And also attending the engineer, Osamu Suzuki, is uh, our uh, structural engineer as well. So he could be answered uh, any questions that you have. So please enjoy it together. Awesome, awesome. Um, so uh, I understand along with um, this project that I saw there with the Mark V, which is kind of a stagger wing biplane looking uh, pusher, um, you actually mm -hmm. got your start in another project that you actually won the Disruptor Prize put on by Boeing called GoFly. Could you, could you talk just a minute about that and uh, and what that was about? Right. Uh, when I was uh, first grade of a doctoral student, there was a uh, well, Twitter tweet out there and uh, Boeing says they're uh, gathering many engineers to build uh, a new EVTOL things. So I just entered it in, then learned a lot of things and gathered many people to, could it possible to have, could we have uh, some kind of, uh, well, short range, aerial motorcycles things in real world. Then we'll investigate a lot of things and the design in a numerical aspect and real world. Then afterward, we uh, assemble the final solution for the travel for the, like an air bike. But uh, we we find some difficulty on it to have fulfilled that entire uh, requirement that GoFly requires to us. So we has to slow down the development uh, to uh, full uh, assemble the aircraft, but uh, just a component of the for efficiency for the propeller and a lightweight structures and other con control surfaces uh, configurations. Then meanwhile, so that's, uh, we have to have some uh, transportation way to make the world more uh, faster. I mean, uh, easy to transport one way to another uh, so do that. to do that, we have to think about another thing. So after the disruptive award, we uh, thinking about the next project with Mark V uh, started. So, so just to clarify this, you originally saw this on Twitter as a tweet that there was a challenge and you put a team together and, and built this uh, EV toll and, and won the prize based off of a tweet. Correct. That's yeah, pretty that's impressive, the, right? I mean, well, to go... That, that's right. I mean, I, I was exhausted about the research and the uh, level of three, so I just uh, <laughs> look around the tweet out there, and uh, the, so impressed that uh, the Boeing will prize that uh, million dollars to the investment for the younger ages generations. So I'm pretty impressed, and I just uh, running rushing to into enter into that competition. Well, congratulations! That is an epic uh, win uh, for you personally, obviously, and your team. So congratulations uh, for that. Thanks very much. Yeah. Uh, just it's interesting to hear the origins of things, and like, again to see, oh look, somebody just tweeted this challenge, and you know, you, you guys put the effort forth and and won. So so going back uh, to current time here with this Mark V, um, this. I, I think it's a really unique, um, interesting design. Um, from you. what I saw there at the show, it looked, uh, I guess, a mix of metal and maybe composite material. I, I prefer working with metal personally, so I was immediately drawn to it. I kind of mm -hmm. like biplanes. This is kind of like a stagger wing biplane, and then the pusher. Right. The, the pusher. Um, so it's a it's an Go interesting on. concept. And like I mentioned off camera. Uh, if this was just a winged aircraft as a pusher with a gas-powered engine, I would be interested in it just just as that platform mm -hmm. alone. 
but you're making it as an EV toll. So, um, mm -hmm. so what did you start with this design? Like, uh, obviously it's a clean sheet design of your own, um, but what um, different influences did you pull from to be able to get the shape and the stagger wing? You know, how did it come together? How did it form? Uh, we at first we think uh, it is hard to combine with the uh, uh, multi loader configuration to with uh, uh, horizontal thrust configuration with one part. For example, the job you were doing the tilt routing system with their uh, enormous uh, investment they got. And the, our, as a team, as a starter, we can do that so much uh, hard effort on it. So we have to separate the hovering things and the uh, horizontal thrust uh, things uh, to to make it more easier and develop faster and uh, is it a handle to everyone in the world? And from that concept, we have to configure some, well, the fixed wing is necessary and so some fixed wing configuration, which, which is the best. So I will ask, I mean, the history that the Bart Rudin was designed a lots of aircraft out there. So uh, some of them uh, has a biplane uh, uh, and it configured our, uh, for a tandem wing layout. It allows us to the, uh, keep uh, the vertical thrust many and the distributed way and the balance well and well, well understand the way of the uh, dynamics of the aircraft itself. So that's a very good uh, to design combined with. So, so can, can, I, can I assume being, being that the rear wing I'm looking at a picture off to the side here. The rear wing is a uh, similar shape and wing area, surface area to the front wing that you have very little to no CG issues with this. You're pretty, I mean, you're pretty much, once you put the pilot in the middle and your baggage behind the pilot, there isn't a lot of stationary movement because you have a wing so far forward and a wing so far aft. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, we put a pilot and a CG of the entire aircraft as well, so that there's no need to modify the uh, the balance weight as much. And uh, also, that is allows to uh, the how can I say the tolerance tolerance to the the weight shift of the uh, CG. Then uh, it it uh, it is came from the both uh, wing has a trim uh, to the weight balance on uh, horizontal flight. Okay, that's it's very interesting. Like I said, I'd, if it didn't have any electric motors on it at all and one gas powered pusher, I would fly it. I, I think it's a really cool looking design. Um, but being that it is uh, electric powered, um, what kind of motors are mm -hmm. powering it? And, you know, where's the, the battery power coming from? And we'll, we'll just start there, I guess. Right, yeah. Uh, at this standpoint, we have a uh, how much is seven horsepower vertical thrust and five kilowatts and seven seven horsepower uh, vertical thrust each. Uh, then uh, with a uh, thirty rotors uh, uh, and and also we have a uh, twenty kilowatts. I mean twenty seven horsepower or so, which are prepared for designing. I mean the researching for a, a lower airspeed uh, horizontal flight. Okay, then, just uh, just to clarify, because I had the audio broke up just a little bit. Oh. Each each individual vertical thrust is roughly mm -hmm. seven horsepower. Yes. And then correct. and then the the forward thrust is twenty seven horsepower. For now, yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, okay. And again, this is more or less an ultralight, correct? Or is it going to yeah, be experimental? That's, that's right. We're now. Let me introduce you to our sponsors that make all this possible. Awesome companies like Dynon Avionics, AirTech Coatings, AV Nation and Airworks. Check the description below this video for links to these great companies. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. If you like these videos that we are producing weekly, Give that like button a click and engage all notifications so you don't miss a single episode. Just to clarify, the vertical motors have about seven horsepower and the forward thrust is a, is a 27 horsepower motor, correct? Correct. For the series number two, yes. Okay. And this is, again, an ultralight. Um, is it going to be, are you looking to hit the 254 pound Mark or higher, I assume, because you probably have a, a parachute and some other devices, or is this going to be more towards the experimental market? Because you got ultralight, experimental, or ultralight, light sport, and then experimental. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
uh, we're focusing on uh, basically and uh, light sports or more um, or more. Uh, so okay. we uh, designed our aircraft as an uh, experimental things. Okay. So you, your target would be to to have a, obviously a, a very light, empty weight, um, and then to shoot for the thirteen hundred and twenty pounds for a gross to be under uh, a light sport rules. Uh, yeah, that's what we're trying to do so. But for now, we have a hundred. Hmm? 1200 1250 uh, for a uh, max uh, taking away so it could be have possible but uh, it depending on a uh, customer's request because we have to sell our craft at first as a kit plane so this is uh, not a light sport and it's not a rules right just kind of experimental aircraft at first so uh, depending on the customer's request we're going to reduce the air uh, fuselage or just uh, increase their uh, weight and also expand the uh, range of the air uh, flight time or uh, depending on the customer's request yeah and then later if you want you could always probably scale this up to to make it carry a heavier payload or even maybe do a side-by-side -side seating for a two place uh it, it depending on a uh, request we but we think it's kind of this kind of the e things is a more distributed way so do not packs i mean the three seats or four seats at once, so uh, we have only oh, at least we have uh, two seat for trading. But uh, this kind of the smaller aircraft is allows us to more uh, faster uh, transportation network with this e tolls. So we secure that the the passenger must be the one or two uh, maximum uh, for that aircraft. Gotcha. That's that's for future, of course. So if I understand right now, you you've done unmanned test flights inside of a of a building. And you are working on the schedule right now to do manned yeah. test flights out there in California over the next few months. That's right. So, uh, so, what, so done, what, is that uh, test, the, what does that test phase look like? I mean, what kind of uh, series of events have to happen, whether for you personally in your company or for uh, legally to become a, you know, a, a light support aircraft or, or whatnot you're trying to get into? I would like to be kind of an uh, aircraft uh, manufacturer at the United States. So we are going to try to uh, get certified as a company for uh, this aircraft at first. Afterward, we are establish some kind of uh, subsidiary at the United States and uh, build more aircraft out there and test more to more frequent and uh, longer uh, hour of the flight. Okay. All right. So um this is again aluminum and then i assume like a carbon fiber as a fuselage or what, what parts are aluminum metal and what parts are carbon fiber or composites right and uh could you no <laughs> right uh, the entire air aircraft i mean the the entire wings are made from the uh, aluminum it's a uh, well square uh, square uh, shaped uh, aluminum uh, wings we have it and the fuselage is, uh, has a cfrp panel uh, with the uh, aluminum frame and the long drawn all those things so the it's a combined with the cfrp and the aluminum in a uh, fuselages okay that would be interesting to see the the construction of that um and uh, i see i didn't see it open at the show but i assumed the front kind of like clamshells open like a fighter jet mm -hmm, that's right yes okay very cool very cool and uh for now i assume the landing gear is fixed it's a fixed gear it's a fixed gear for now okay all right um what if this is going to be marketed as a kit I, i'm very mm -hmm. interested in kits right so um what would the customer see when they get really? the kit you know is it going to be i assume some version of a quick build kit that's already done at the factory and then you, like up to the 51 percent rule i i assume mm -hmm. or is this like you build everything at what level of kit will you be providing once this gets going Mm -hmm. uh, we think it's better to uh, deliver with the uh, uh, quick build kit and also that there's kind of uh, building support with the facility out there then build together and correct things or uh, 
uh, know each other about the technology and the customer's opinions and the way it is possible or not. It is, that's our vision. But we have uh, lots of customers request from all over the world, not only the United States, but also the Russia or uh, South America or uh, Europe, UK. So we couldn't have that kind of support facility out there. So we just deliver them a quick build, get them to uh, allow us to allow them to fly much faster. Hey. So if it's going to be, we call that an advanced quick build kit, right? So it's it's up to probably the 51% rule. Mm -hmm. That being said, about how many hours might be left for the customer, you think, to build or what processes would you have the fuselage pretty much already done and they'd have to assemble the wing, the ribs and the wings and stuff like that. Uh, and then obviously wiring and, and interior and stuff, but like at, at what level Mm -hmm. And then how many hours would you guesstimate that might be to, to final construction? Mm -hmm. uh, for now, we have, uh, and we have estimated our uh, development, I mean, the time to the, uh, complete our kit. Uh, as in the development phase, we spent uh, 1,200 hours to uh, complete the entire uh, aircraft uh, as a first version. So, but uh, we have to more reduce the more, uh, hours to complete those gates to like a RV has a 900 or something. So uh, we wanted to reduce the total uh, amount of the hour. And then uh, as a quick build kit, uh, we only uh, ask the customers to have uh, 400 hours to build the rest of the components to assemble the entire aircraft. Gotcha. So uh, approximately 400 hours or less, you should be able to build this as yeah, provided. We, we Folks, I mean, we're targeted to do so. Uh, and, and is this so, primarily, I know a lot of kits are going to this, um, mm -hmm. uh, going to be pop riveted? Or is, is it going to be solid AN rivets too, or a mix? Uh, we think it's better to have the pop riveted only is a better way to people understand and easy to uh, assemble uh, the aircraft. So we think it's pop riveted one is better to have that. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate the... Uh, the in-depth uh, interview here and to know more about what you're what you're doing um mm -hmm. other than going to tetra-aviation.com where do you post most of your updates as you are progressing through this if people want to follow your progress uh, i think it's better to follow our twitter or uh, facebook and we have a main magazine uh, who are interested in our product so uh what do you mean for the YouTube, we're going to uh, do the videos on the progress. So uh, uh, we're going to produce our news in a Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and LinkedIn as well. But uh, if you're more interested in our progress or having uh, the booking meeting or the progress, we have a mail magazine. So just register it on it. Yeah, okay, the, so the, uh, on your website and then a, a newsletter there, is that correct? Uh, website and newsletter and YouTube uh, and uh, social media. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're everywhere. Yeah, we're everywhere. You're everywhere. Pick, pick your, uh, pick your poison. Which one you want to take it? Thanks for watching this week's episode. Remember to rivet down that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit all the bell notifications so you don't miss a single episode. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.